Hey guys, today it's time for me to share my winter empties. These are all the products that I used up in the last three months, and now that it is officially spring, I am ready to clear out my empties bin. So this time around, I feel like it's a little bit of a smaller empties than usual. I have a lot of skincare, body care, and hair care, not a ton of makeup this time. So hopefully next time I'll have more makeup. But I'll go ahead and start with the one makeup empty that I have here. This I loved. This is the Makeup Revolution 5D Lash Pal Volumizing Mascara. I received this in PR like last summer and I had never heard of this mascara before. I don't think I'd ever heard anyone talking about it, but I fell in love. It has kind of weird packaging. I've never seen mascara with this type of packaging before, but you just press the lid down to open it. Um, if you twist it, nothing happens, but there's that. And then to close it, you also just press it again and it's really securely shut. So I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, at first I thought it was kind of gimmicky, but at the same time, I know like some people might have like arthritis or other mobility issues, so it might be useful if that's you. Um, and I personally didn't find it to be a hindrance to using the product. It has a pretty standard brush with the like natural style bristles and it's kind of a large brush, which normally I don't love, but I actually didn't find it to be very difficult to use at all. I didn't end up getting mascara like all over my eyelid or anything when I used it. I found it pretty easy to control despite the size. And what I really liked about this formula is that it was volumizing, but in a buildable sort of way. So some mascaras like the Milani Anti-Gravity, which I also really like, that one, that is a one coater. Like you put on one coat and your lashes are as full as they're gonna be. And you can't really necessarily build it much more than that without it getting clumpy. This one with one coat, you definitely get some nice length and volume, but it's a little bit of a more natural fluttery look. But then if you build up a second or even third coat, you can get a really dramatic look. So. I'm this, I don't know, I would almost say I think I like this even more now than the Milani Anti-Gravity, also because I didn't really have any flaking with this up until the very end. And I keep my mascaras for six months. Right up around the five month mark is when I started to get just a little bit of flaking with it, but I don't really hold that against it because, you know, it was getting dried out. It was on its last leg. Of course, mascara is so personal. I know one thing can work amazingly for one person and then another person with even the same type of preferences might have a completely different experience. But for the price, it retails for $10. Sometimes, you know, Ulta and other stores will have discounts on Makeup Revolution. So if you can get it even on sale, I think it's definitely worth trying for the price. Um, but yeah, I was really happy with this. I have quite a few other mascaras I need to work through before I even think about repurchasing anything, but I would definitely consider getting this again in the future if I was in need of a mascara. I think I might be breaking the all-time record for the number of empty cleansers that I have in here. <laughs> like, at least for me, like, I usually don't go through this many cleansers, but Nathan and I do share them, so that probably has something to do with it. I have one, two, three, four cleansers in this round which is a lot to go through. I mean, most of these I had open for much longer than like the last three months, you know. But let's start with an old favorite. This is the Paula's Choice Softening Cream Cleanser from their Skin Recovery line. This has been a favorite for years at this point. I think this is probably the third or fourth bottle of this that I've gone through, and this is the jumbo size. This was a lifesaver, especially when I was first starting out with tretinoin because my skin was super dry, it was peeling, it was so sensitive, and just about every cleanser would disrupt my skin barrier. But this is a non-foaming cream cleanser, which is great if you're having dry, sensitive skin. This line specifically is for dry to very dry skin, so it has been a lifesaver for me. Lately, my skin has not been nearly as dry and sensitive, and I think that's because I did go down in strength with my tretinoin. So I was using 0.05% for the first couple years. I don't know why that's what my dermatologist started me on, but even after two years on tretinoin, I was still, my, I felt like my skin was just still more sensitive than I would like it to be. So I asked my doctor to prescribe me 0.025% instead. And ever since then, my skin has been so much less sensitive, but I feel like I'm still getting all the benefits of tretinoin. So now I'm actually able to use foaming cleansers, cleansers that have a little bit of a lather. So far, I've been able to use those with no problem. So I don't know that I'll need to go back to this one necessarily right now because my skin also hasn't been quite as dry. Sometimes it's even a little bit more like combo, like I get some oily areas. Where we live in the winter, it actually is very humid. So that's kind of nice because I just, my skin has not been dry this winter like it normally has been in past winters. So all that to say, sometimes I think 
My skin is even better off with a gel cleanser. It's just a little bit more deep cleansing, but this is a great option for those of you with really dry, sensitive skin. I highly recommend it. I do feel like even though it doesn't really form a lather at all, it still does effectively like really cleanse my skin without making it feel stripped. So still highly recommend it, but I don't know that I would repurchase it unless my skin gets, you know, really dry and sensitive in the future, then I definitely would. Another cream cleanser I used up, I did like this one, but just not quite as much as my trusty Paula's Choice. This is the Ordinary Glycolipid Cream Cleanser. Um, this is also a non-foaming cleanser, very gentle. It's been a while since I used this up, so I'm trying to remember. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what it was like. Oh yeah, this one almost had like a little bit of a coconut scent. I'm not sure what ingredient, doesn't have the list of ingredients here on the packaging, but there was some kind of maybe coconut derived ingredient in here, which I didn't find to irritate my skin. Sometimes coconut, like coconut oil in products can break me out. I don't think this had coconut oil in it, but it did have kind of a coconutty scent. So if you're usually really sensitive to coconut, maybe be wary of that. But I liked this. I just maybe didn't find it quite as deep cleansing as the softening cream cleanser from Paula, but at the same time it was nice and gentle. I would use it either as a morning cleanser, because lately I have also gotten back into cleansing in the morning, and it's nice for just something really gentle to start out the day, but for a nighttime cleanser I just didn't feel like it was quite like getting everything off, you know? So I liked this one, but I probably wouldn't get it again. We actually also used up a foaming cleanser. This is the Dear Claire's Rich Moist Foaming Cleanser. So this is a Korean brand. I've also used up one of their sunscreens in the past and really liked it too. This was lovely. So this actually comes out, like it has a foaming pump. So it comes out in a foam, but it was very gentle. I didn't find it stripping at all. It says it's meant to both hydrate and deeply cleanse, which I think is an accurate description because it definitely felt like it cleaned my skin well, but it also didn't leave it feeling stripped or dry. So this I would recommend honestly for any skin type, unless you're super dry and you can't do foaming cleansers at all. But anyone else I think would really enjoy this one. This actually had kind of like a tea tree oil scent, which usually, usually I don't love anything with tea tree oil in it because I find it to be maybe drying or irritating, but this that was not the case with this at all. So really enjoyed that. And then the fourth cleanser we used up, this is a benzoyl peroxide acne wash, and I just ended up getting the Equate version. This is like the Walmart version of Panoxyl, which is the name brand. This is interesting. This, so it has 10% benzoyl peroxide maximum strength, and it says for treatment of acne on the face, chest, and back. I actually didn't use this on my face a whole lot. Occasionally I would use it because sometimes I'm prone to getting acne like on my temples. And so I would just lather a little bit of it on there sometimes, but not all over my face because I just don't feel like I need it all over. But the main places that I used this were on my chest and back and actually my underarms as well. I kept getting a, a like folliculitis type breakout on my underarm, just my right underarm, which is weird. It's only ever on this one. And I watched Dr. Dre on YouTube. She's a dermatologist and she recommends benzoyl peroxide wash for folliculitis and she also uses it just to reduce underarm odor. I find that I still need to wear deodorant if I want to not have underarm odor because like I, I felt like it definitely reduced the odor but didn't get rid of it entirely. But ever since I started using this I have not gotten folliculitis on my underarms. Really it looks like an acne breakout but it's very itchy and it's like in a hair follicle where it happens. So what I would do was just slather this on my underarms and then also on like my upper back and chest in the shower, let it sit for a minute or so, kind of like a leave-on mask, and then rinse it off. You do have to be careful to really thoroughly rinse it off because if you don't, it can like bleach your towels. So some of our towels now have like bleach stains on them from using this, which I didn't think that would really be a problem with a a benzoyl peroxide wash. I know I've had that in the past with like a leave-on benzoyl peroxide treatment, but anyway, just FYI, usually I would do this and then go in with my body wash or soap to really cleanse the skin. But this was interesting also because it did not lather whatsoever. So if you have really sensitive skin, this might be a good option if you still want to be able to use benzoyl peroxide. Well, actually on the back here it says do not use if you have very sensitive skin. So Maybe if you have very sensitive skin, you wouldn't want to use this. But if you usually prefer a cream cleanser that doesn't lather, this was really nice. Very affordable, too. I actually already repurchased it and have another one in my shower now, and I use it almost every day. So, really big fan of that. Continuing on with skincare, I actually have three moisturizers. Two of them Nathan and I both used. We shared them. I'll start with this one. This one? So, <laughs> this is the Paula's Choice Barrier Repair Advanced Moisturizer. Look at what has happened with the the writing on the bottle it has like completely 
disintegrated on here and it started happening very early on in using this. That has never happened to me before with Apollo's Choice product. I don't know if they like recently changed their like packaging manufacturer or something, but th that is honestly unacceptable for such an expensive product. So that was a bit annoying, especially like as I'm putting on my skincare, I would get like letters on my fingers from the outside and I don't want to like put that on my face. So it was just, yeah, I don't know. I hope they fix whatever is going on with that. But the product inside was lovely. I would say like the name barrier repair is very accurate because I really did feel like this was something I could use when my skin was feeling kind of sensitive. This would really like I felt like it really would repair my barrier overnight. And it felt very deeply hydrating, very kind of like a wet feeling moisturizer. You know how some moisturizers almost feel like more buttery, but not quite as like hydrating. This felt very hydrating and moisturizing. So it wasn't like the thickest moisturizer ever, more of like a lotion texture, but at the same time, it really did feel like it was quenching my skin's dryness. And it says it's for all skin types, which I would agree. I think anyone of any skin type would enjoy this. I loved the product inside, but I probably wouldn't get this again unless, you know, I knew for sure that this wasn't going to happen with the label. This one I loved. This is the Nomad Air, the face cream from their like travel line. Normally I wouldn't think to go to an indie makeup brand for skincare, but I actually thought they did a lovely job on this face cream. And this kind of came with a ton of product. It came with 3.4 fluid ounces, which is like double what an average moisturizer comes with. I think yeah, this Paula's Choice one came with 1.7 fluid ounces, which is pretty standard. So this came with basically double that. So it took me a while to go through this. This was great. And I liked how even though it does come with a hefty amount of moisturizer, the packaging itself is not bulky at all. Like it's really easy to slide this into your makeup bag because it really doesn't take up that much space. This was fragrance free, didn't have any noticeable scent to it, and honestly had kind of a similar texture to the Paula's Choice one. Very no frills, deeply hydrating. I felt like even when my skin was dry, like when I travel, my skin does get pretty dry like being on a plane, but this would clear up any dryness very quickly. So. I was very happy with this. If you happen to be shopping on Nomad's website and you're in need of a new moisturizer, I would definitely recommend this one. And from this same line, I also really like the Lip Salve. That I have been using like all winter and it has been great and I haven't reacted to it. It hasn't made my throat scratchy like a lot of lip balms have started doing. So definitely recommend both of those from this line. And the palette from this line is really nice. The only thing I didn't end up trying was the facial mist just because I'm not really a big facial mist person. So I, I can't really speak to that, but the other three products from the line are really, really good. Also loved this moisturizer. This is the Peach and Lily Matcha Pudding Antioxidant Cream. Nathan and I both used this and both really liked it. He said that this is one of his all-time favorite moisturizers now. It's up there for him with the e.l.f. Holy Hydration, which he also loves. That one is much cheaper though, so if you want something that has kind of a similar texture to this, the e.l.f. Holy Hydration is a great way to go. This actually has um, something else in it now. I ended up putting the rest of the Glow Recipe Dew Drops in here. When the pump stopped working, I just decanted them into here. The moisturizer itself was actually green, like the color of matcha, and it had kind of like a ginger, like a very subtle ginger sort of fragrance. I didn't find it irritating at all, but if you're, you know, if you avoid fragrance, then this did have a little bit of fragrance to it. But yeah, I thought this had a lovely texture. Again, kind of a similar texture to the Nomad and the Paula's Choice that I just reviewed, but yeah, it had a nice thickness to it, but it didn't feel greasy at all. I felt like I could wear this in the daytime or at night and it wasn't too heavy, but at the same time, it was very, very rich and hydrating. So I've been really impressed with the Peach and Lily products. I'm also using their cleanser right now, the gel cleanser, and I'm loving that. Really loving that cleanser. I'm It's almost gone and I'm like, I wanna get another one. Maybe I should pick one up soon. But yeah, I'm, I'm understanding the hype now with Peach and Lily. I see why so many people like their products. I have two serums here. One of these, Nathan actually used most of it. This is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Dew Drops. I also use this product. I have my own. Actually, I keep it in my makeup drawers because I like to use it either as a primer or as a mixer with other products. Honestly, this is one of those things I don't necessarily feel like you need this in your routine. It's not a must-have, but for what it is, it is really lovely. Like, it gives your skin a really glassy, plumped up glow, 
but it doesn't feel greasy at all and it's not going to break down your makeup throughout the day. At first I didn't think it was worth the hype, but the more I've used it, the more I've enjoyed it. Nathan loves this product too. Like they've sent these in PR quite a few times and I normally give it to him because he loves Glow Recipe and it makes his skin look really nice and juicy. I, I think, yeah, just a great product. Definitely pricey. I know Essence makes an alleged dupe of this, which I haven't tried, but if you want to save some money, that might be a good one to check out. Then a serum that I used up, this is the iUnique Beta Glucan Power Moisture Serum. This was so nice. I really enjoyed this. iUnique makes some really great products. This is another Korean brand. I love their sunscreen. I'm also using their cleansing oil right now. I'm almost done with it. I have really enjoyed every product that I've tried from them so far. This was great. It, it reminded me of a lot of hyaluronic acid serums that I've used in the past, except it was a lot more hydrating than those. Like it had a nice thickness to it. It was like a clear gel sort of consistency, but it had a really nice viscosity to it. And I loved adding this in anytime I felt like my skin needed just a little boost of hydration. This was great because I knew that I could use it and it wasn't going to irritate my skin at all. Sometimes I feel like if I'm using too many products at a time, my skin just gets irritated. But this was something I could always add in anytime I felt like I just wanted a little serum to add into my routine and it wasn't going to bother my skin. Beta-glucan I think is a humectant like hyaluronic acid, but I think I like beta-glucan better than hyaluronic acid. I've never really felt like I need just a dedicated hyaluronic acid serum in my routine. I just don't feel like they do that much where it's worth the extra step, but this, this was worth the extra step. I really enjoyed this. A sunscreen I used up, this I would not repurchase. This is the COSRX Aloe Soothing Sun Cream with SPF 50+. I obviously liked it enough to use it up, but I just found this a little bit finicky for me. This is one of those sunscreens that you really can't layer it with too many other products or else it can pill. So whenever I use this, this pretty much had to be the only skincare product that I was using. And then I could layer it under makeup, but even then I didn't love the way it looked under makeup. I felt like it just looked kind of heavy. Sometimes it could look a little bit dry. Even though this had kind of a nice moisturizing feel on the skin, it didn't feel mattifying at all, but it also wasn't overly shiny. Like, there were things I liked about it, but just the fact that it was so prone to pilling made me not really want to purchase it again. Also, I noticed that this, if I put it too close to my eye area, it would burn my eyes throughout the day, which is usually not the case with Korean sunscreens. And that's one of the main reasons that I like Korean sunscreens is because I can put them, you know, under my eyes and even a little bit on my eyelids, and they're not going to irritate my eyes. So... This um, I wouldn't repurchase. Also had a pretty strong fragrance, like a very floral fragrance. It is very affordable though, and a lot of people I've heard love this, and it's like their holy grail. So could be worth trying. It is a hybrid sunscreen, so it does have both mineral and chemical filters, but I didn't notice any sort of white cast. Obviously, I'm very fair, so I'm not sure. It might leave a white cast on deeper skin tones, but um, yeah. Could be worth a try if you're looking for an affordable sunscreen, but I also think there are much better out there. Check out my Korean sunscreen roundup. I've done two in the past, and I'm actually gearing up to do another one, but this time I'm going to be reviewing both Korean and Japanese sunscreens, so really excited for that. That should be coming out in June. But if you want to see me apply this in a demo, I'll link the video below where you can see that. Ugh, this makes me so sad. This was my holy grail lip balm for years, and it's the Paula's Choice Lip and Body Treatment Balm. Unfortunately, I've mentioned a few times recently that a lot of lip products have started making my throat kind of scratchy, and I'm not sure if it's an allergy or if it's just some ingredient that kind of like coats my throat and irritates it, but this, for the longest time, I had no issues with it, but just recently, this joined the club of lip products that I can no longer use. I actually used up almost all of this before that started happening, so I was able to finish most of it and then I gave it to Nathan to finish up the rest. This was a great lip balm. It's very no frills. It has no flavor, no scent. It doesn't give your lips like any sort of glossiness. It's just very much a workhorse product. It's one of those lip balms that like I would put on at night and then wake up the next morning and my lips would be completely healed of any chappedness or dryness. And you get a lot of product in here and I think it retails for $15, which for the amount you get is actually a really great deal. Like basically drugstore price browns. So I definitely would still recommend this. I'm sad I can't use it anymore, but we had a great run together. I think I have used up like four or five of these over the years. Okay, that was all the skincare. Let's do some body care now. This, I used up a hand cream. This came in the Yes Style advent calendar this past year. This is from the brand F Frutia, and it's their Reproust Essential Blending Hand Cream. Really enjoyed the texture of this. It was kind of like a thick gel cream, and it felt really, really hydrating on my hands. 
What I didn't like about it was the scent. It says it has um, geranium and bergamot oil. Very like essential oily type smell, which I don't love. I don't really like the scent of bergamot. It's kind of like a citrusy scent. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of the scent of this, but I did really enjoy the feel of it on my hands. I would use this pretty much every night as my hand cream. I've been getting a lot more into hand care recently, like at night when I'm doing my skincare routine. I've also been, of course, taking it down like the neck, the chest, and the back of the neck too. But then also on my hands, I will either use a retinol or like a hydrating serum. Sometimes I would use the Ionique serum or I'll use like the Coco Kind Discoloration Serum. And then I would go over that with this hand cream and I feel like my hands have been exceptionally soft lately. So I've been enjoying just making a habit of doing skincare on my hands because your hands are one of the first places to show signs of aging. So I've been really trying to be more diligent about that. So that was the hand cream I've been using. I will cut this open. I think there's probably just a little bit more in there, but this is pretty much empty, so probably wouldn't get this one again unless they came out with other scents, then I would consider it, but just didn't really care for the scent of this one. Okay, I loved this body wash. This was probably, I would say this was my favorite body wash of all time. Like, not trying to be dramatic, but I really enjoyed this. This is the uh, Dove Snow Blossom body wash. This was the creamiest body wash I have ever encountered. It was so lovely. It did lather up nicely, but it came out just this very rich cream. It had a beautiful, mild, like slightly floral, but just very clean scent. Really nice for the winter. And this left my skin feeling so moisturized that I almost didn't feel like I needed body lotion. In fact, I, I wouldn't recommend this, but I did go a while there, like not really using body lotion. I go through phases. I know it's bad. I know I'm back in the habit now of using it after every shower, but this was so moisturizing that I almost didn't feel like it was necessary. I mean, it definitely still is necessary, but if you're like kind of lazy with body lotion, I would recommend this because it does leave your skin feeling really soft and hydrated. I cannot wait to get another one of these. This was so nice. In the meantime, um, Nathan got a couple of these bar soaps from like a craft fair or something that he went to. I think this is like a small Pacific Northwest company that makes these. I'll see if they have a website that I can link to, but this is the Gold Hill Rustic Herbals Soothing Oatmeal Bar Soap. Really nice. It has only a few ingredients. Soybean, olive and castor oil, oatmeal, and Himalayan pink salt. That's it. And this was a very, I actually have another, he, he got two of them, so we have the second one in our shower now. But I really enjoyed this too. I don't usually love bar soaps. Like typically I do go for body washes because I, I don't know, I just like the experience of body wash better. And I also feel like when we use bar soap for too many months at a time, we get like a lot of soap scum in the shower that's hard to clean. But really enjoyed this. It was very soothing, very gentle. Also didn't feel drying at all, which I feel like a lot of the times can be the case with bar soaps. So definitely enjoyed that if you ever or looking for a good little small business to check out, I would recommend it. Also used up the EOS Cashmere Skin Shave Butter. And this was in, actually, does it have a scent on here? It doesn't say the scent, but I'm pretty sure this is their vanilla cashmere scent. It smells the same as their vanilla cashmere body lotion, which I still need to get another one of those. I had one of those a while ago and it was amazing. So. My favorite thing about this was the scent, to be honest, like, oh, it just smells so rich and, like, vanilla-y. Reminds me of, like, the Vanilla Bean Noel scent from Bath & Body Works, kind of, like, just a really warm, cozy vanilla. Um, very thick cream. This is the kind of shave cream that doesn't really foam up. It just goes on, like, almost like a butter. I enjoyed it. Um, I would possibly repurchase this, but I think next time I want to get one of the tree hut shave oils because those they don't gunk up your razor at all they're, they're super easy to rinse off the razor but this one because it is so thick it would kind of gunk up the razor and it would take a little while for all of it to rinse out but if you're looking for something that's just like super hydrating i would always get a really nice close shave with this and i don't think i ever got razor burn when i used this so I did think it was nice, it did a good job, but it is a very thick shave cream, so just keep that in mind. If you're impatient like me, <laughs> uh, maybe wouldn't recommend it, but I love the scent of this. And yeah, I wanna get another one of the body lotions in this scent because it is just so, so cozy. I love it so much. And now we are on to hair care. I finally finished the shampoo bar from Kitsch. I think in my last empties video, I had the Kitsch 
conditioner bar. This is the little pouch that you can put the bar into and it helps the bar last longer because you're not like setting it down onto a flat surface where like water is going to break it down faster. So it's able to dry more quickly and it also just keeps it out of the way in your shower, which is nice. And you can just leave it inside of here. It's sort of like a mesh material. Lather it up in your hands or even just like paint it directly onto your hair and it would lather up pretty quickly. I liked this better when we had really soft water in Seattle. The water in Seattle, I know I've said this so many times, but Seattle has the world's softest water and I learned that I actually don't like super soft water. I know that sounds backwards, but I, I don't like really soft water because it actually makes it really hard to rinse product out of your hair. So I would have to be very particular about which shampoos I was using. This is the one I actually found it did not weigh down my hair with the soft water. So I thought that was pretty nice. Now that we have our water isn't super hard now, but it's nowhere near as soft as it was before. I found it a little bit more drying here, so that's that's all I'll say. I probably wouldn't buy it again, but if you have really soft water, I would recommend it. This was their rice water shampoo bar, by the way, so um, I'll link the correct one down below. But I would also recommend getting the little mesh bag if you're going to go for a shampoo bar. I think it is sold separately, but I would recommend it. I felt like this was... A game changer, honestly. A shampoo that has shown up in many, many of my empties videos. This is the Dove Dermacare Scalp Dryness and Itch Relief Anti Dandruff Shampoo. I have already repurchased this. I feel like I'm I'm not falling out of love with this product necessarily, but I'm not loving it as much these days because I just feel like this is kind of a hydrating shampoo. So I sometimes I feel like I need something a little bit more deep cleansing for my scalp. I've been watching a lot of Abby Young's video. She does a lot of hair care videos. She is a hair wizard and she has talked a lot about how, especially if you have dandruff, it's a good idea to use a clarifying shampoo or something with either the word clarifying or detox, something that's going to really get into your scalp and clean all of the gunk out because that is really what feeds dandruff. Like that's what causes more and more dandruff. Dandruff is not really a dry scalp issue. It's actually an oily scalp issue. I don't really understand their um, marketing here because they say it's an anti-dandruff shampoo, but they also say that it's a dryness and itch relief shampoo. I don't really struggle with dryness of my scalp. Um, dandruff, yes. Itch relief, yes, I can use that. But I don't really understand, like this does have a very kind of like creamy feel to it. So I don't know. After the one that I have in the shower, I will use it up, but I don't know if I'm going to go back to this one or if I might just try a different dandruff shampoo, but um, I have really enjoyed this. I would say like the nice thing about this is unlike a lot of dandruff shampoos, it doesn't dry out the strands of your hair, which is nice, but sometimes I would, instead of just using this by itself, I would use this first let it sit on my scalp for a couple minutes to really let the active ingredient do its job, then rinse it, and then I would go in with a clarifying shampoo afterwards. And that has worked better for me, but sometimes I just feel like, you know, that's just a lot of work. <laughs> so I would rather only use like one shampoo at a time if I can help it. I do feel like this keeps my dandruff at bay though, so it does its job in that sense, but I might just be on the hunt for a different dandruff shampoo after I'm finished with the current one. But that being said, I think it's a good option. It's nice and affordable. So yeah, that's what I'll say about that. Ooh, okay. This was fun to try. This is the Olaplex number no. five bond maintenance conditioner. This was sent in PR. This is really not something I would purchase myself. I think I'm not really the target market for Olaplex. I really, I think it's meant for people with very chemically processed hair. If you've bleached your hair, it's supposed to help like repair the bonds of your hair which I can always use any sort of damage repair because I get split ends from using heat styling and stuff, but I enjoyed this while I had it, but I don't think I would purchase it myself just because like, how much, how much does this cost? Let me look it up. $30. Yeah. See, I typically am a drugstore hair care kind of girl, especially when it comes to shampoo and conditioner, things that I'm using up frequently. Um, I, I liked it. I felt like it would leave my hair feeling nice and soft and silky. 
uh, noticeably smoother, but at the same time, I've gotten the same thing from drugstore conditioners. Like I really love, and I want to go back to using the Garnier Whole Blends conditioners. It's been a while since I've used those for some reason, but I have gotten really great results with those as well. So again, like I said, I don't really think I'm the target market for this product per se, but it was enjoyable while I had it. I actually still have the shampoo in the shower now, and it's almost full. It's so funny. The shampoo of this, the Olaplex shampoo, you need the tiniest bit, and it, it like explodes into a lather. <laughs> it is a very concentrated formula, which is nice for something so expensive, but as you can see, I went through the conditioner much faster than the shampoo. A drugstore hair care product that I loved, and I could definitely see myself repurchasing this, this is the Aussie Miracle Repair Bond Protecting Serum. This was so good. So I recently, thanks to Abby Young, I learned that it's really important to apply some sort of leave-in product to your hair after washing it. It's kind of like if you were to wash your face but then not go in with a moisturizer, you're kind of doing the same thing to your hair if you don't go in with something to hydrate and like protect your strands. So this has been my leave-in product for the past like three months and I really loved it. It had a really nice scent, kind of a strong scent. So if you're sensitive, just beware. But I really like the scent. I didn't find it to weigh down my hair. I have very fine hair, but I would go in with like two pumps total. So one pump on this half of my hair and one pump on this half. And it didn't weigh it down, didn't make it stringy. Um, but also really I noticed like my hair felt noticeably softer and silkier when I used this. So I thoroughly enjoyed this. I really would love to try some of the Aussie shampoos and conditioners, but unfortunately all the ones that I have seen in stores at least have methyl isothiazolinone, which is that preservative that I've found that I'm allergic to. So unfortunately I can't use any of their like the three minute miracle conditioners. I really wanted to, to get that, but I was really bummed to see that it has that ingredient. So this doesn't have that though. So, and this was pretty affordable too, if I remember correctly, I think it was like, I can just look up right now and tell you five dollars this was five dollars amazing highly recommend yeah i would love to get my hands on another one of these i have another leave-in conditioner that i am gonna start using that i need to use up first but i would love to go back to this in the future so those are all the products that i used up and some of them nathan helped me use up as well this winter i always love sharing these videos these are my favorite videos to film honestly because I just, well, first of all, I just love the satisfaction of finishing a product, but I also feel like I'm able to give the most thorough review possible when I've used a product up in its entirety. So if you like empties videos, I will link my empties playlist down below. I have done so many of these on my channel over the years, but thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I do also have a Patreon and a channel membership if you're interested in supporting my channel further and also getting some extra content. I do an extra makeup video and a vlog for my patrons and members every month, so if you would like to get some extra content while also supporting my channel, I would love to have you over there as well. Otherwise, I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day, and I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye!